Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll be doing a review on the Everlast Everhide double end bag. So check it out. Hey guys, Carlo here, and today I'm doing a review on the Everlast Everhide double end bag. This retails for $34.95 from Everlast. It's made in China and it utilizes this synthetic Everhide material, which is basically a, a synthetic vinyl or polyurethane. It is eight inches in diameter around the fat part of the bag, as well as 18 inches in length. So 18 inches from the top to this bottom ring. The very top of the bag has a zippered opening where the actual bladder goes into. So you can zip it and zip it close. If you need to replace the bladder, you also have uh, this Velcro strap, which kind of keeps everything nice and tight with the metal rivets to the metal loop at the very top or the metal ring. At the very bottom, it's pretty much identical. You have the metal ring, the rivets, as well as the, uh, the Velcro strap. Now, this is probably the best feature of this bag, at least compared to a lot of other double end bags I've reviewed. They actually hid the inflation port at the very bottom. So I'll give credit to Everlast for doing that because now it's hidden and unlike some other double end bags, it's not stuck right here on the surface of the bag right where you punch it. So you don't have to worry about hitting that, that insertion port and end up blowing up the bladder prematurely. Uh, it's nice that that insertion port is at the very bottom. Now the problem with this bag, although the location is perfect, is I noticed that this bag tends to lose air quicker than some of the other double end bags. Like within two or three days, I noticed that the bag gets pretty soft, so I have to reinflate it. And that might just be the quality of the actual bladder on the inside itself um, that's causing the leakage that I've had. So I, I have to reinflate it every couple days to get it nice and solid. Uh, the bag itself, that Everhide material, looks kind of like a fake carbon fiber, just like they use in some of their other products with the satin finish. You have the Everlast logo on two panels opposite of each other, as well as this welted seam look. Um, you have the tag here at the bottom. It shows that it's made in China and has like a little serial number. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Quality wise, definitely is lacking in this in this bag. Um, one thing about it is just the stitching is pretty much terrible. You can see throughout the bag, just there's so many areas where the stitching is done very poorly, where it's frayed, coming apart. I mean, you can see it just this huge uh, stitching that's popping out right there. So. To me, it's like there's a huge quality control issue with this. If, if you're Everlast and you're sending these products out, I would assume that you have some kind of QC procedure, you know, and if, that, if I'm that person that's looking at this, there's no way that I'm gonna be sending this out or I'm putting this up for sale, you know, just based on the stitching alone. It looks really, really bad. And you can even see right here, just whoever stitched it, just, it's almost like they had a blindfold on and they just started using the sewing machine and just was like, all right, done. On to the next bag so you know i think that's the biggest issue is the stitching and kind of the premature leakage uh, of the bladder inside other than that i mean the bag size is perfect i do like the eight inch diameter um you know uh, the way it performs is really good uh, so let's go ahead and hook this up and kind of demonstrate how this bag performs and that way you guys can see it for yourself let me hook it up real quick One thing you'll notice is when I uh, connected it, because there's enough, a lot of tension on here, is this uh, Velcro kind of separated at the very top. Not a huge deal, but just something I noticed. So you'll notice that the reaction is really based on how much I tension it. That's not gonna be really an indicative of actual bag performance, um, but it does feel good. I like the fact that there's no logos or nothing on here. So if you wanted to use this bag, with your bare hands, you could and not have to worry about hitting a plastic uh, patch or something on there and scraping up your knuckles. So I do like the fact that the surface of the bag is pretty much clean and flat. There's nothing on there except for the Everlast logo. Um, the bag is very lightweight in feel, so it's not a heavy double line bag. So it's good if you want to work on good speed work. And just like any other double line bag, it has good rebound. If you listen closely, you'll hear that zipper. That's another thing I don't like is this zipper, when you're hitting the bag, just flops around and makes this really annoying flopping around sound that you typically don't get. 
uh, with other bags. One thing they could have done to correct that is have some kind of like flap to cover the zipper uh, when, you, when you close it so that it just stays put. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, you can get yourself a piece of tape and just tape over the zipper, uh, but that is kind of annoying when you're hitting the bag. You have that constant rattling sound. And I know most of you, or a lot of you guys probably use your headphones when you're training. So you probably won't even hear it anyways, but maybe if you're using it in an apartment or in a house and there's other people there, that might piss them off a little bit or kind of annoy them. So from an actual like rebound perspective, it performs really well. It feels really lightweight. Um, I do like the, the way it feels to the touch of my hands. Um, I just say that the biggest issue I have with this bag is going to be the quality, the longevity, uh, the bladder deflating within like a day or two, and just the overall stitching. Uh, you know, I don't really foresee this bag lasting more than a couple of weeks, if that, if I consistently use this thing every day. Uh, if you had this in an actual boxing gym, this thing will probably last a couple of days, maybe a week, if that, just depending on how many people are using it uh, and how many rounds, how, how much time is being spent. Because you know, compared to like the ringside bag or even the Reyes, which is like a completely different world in terms of quality, uh, this is just not, to me, not built uh, to last, especially for something that's gonna be used by uh, a lot of boxers or people that are training in boxing. To me, it's not just durable enough for that. And especially at the, the price point of $35, in my opinion, there's a lot other better double end bags out there for that price, or if not, maybe a little bit more. I mean, if you're gonna spend 35 bucks, you can spend 40 or 50, get yourself a really nice all leather ringside or title bag, uh, spend a little bit more and give yourself a really nice uh, Reyes bag, which is my favorite. So, you know, just not worth the cost. The quality is definitely not there. Uh, it, it would be nice that, you know, Everlast eventually fixes these things. And, you know, even if they um, change manufacturing and just get something that's more solid, uh, you know, manufacture in Pakistan or, or just have better quality control. And, and to me, that would be uh, a lot better in, in terms of, you know, people wanting to buy their products and taking it seriously. I feel like this is kind of marketed towards people that just walk into a Walmart and have never boxed in their life and they just want a bag. But even at that price point at $35, you should at least give them something that's better quality than this. So just my opinion on this bag. Overall, I do like the porn performance, but obviously the quality is where it's lacking uh, the most. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below as usual. I'll put the link in the description box where you can find this Everhide double M bag. I'll see you guys later. Take care.